It's up the river about uh, 40 miles where I was born. And I was born on an island about two acres in land over in, just across the border in Canada. And the island was called Indian Camp. And my father was uh, netting fish. That's why we were camping on the island and I had no doctor or anything. When I was born, all I had was my grandmother. And I was pretty near born in a St. Lawrence skiff. I uh, ran boats all my life. I had the first boat when I was six years old to go to school. That was at two miles from the island to Chippewa. And then we gradually, later years, got better boats and bigger boats. And that was my beginning. My grandfather, they were all market hunters. You see, there was nothing, nothing in the fall that was money. So they started market hunting. And they started on Granadier Island, my grandfather did. And they used to kill the ducks today, clean them, and be in Brockville the next morning to the farmer's market to sell them. That's how they started ducks, decoy, decoy and ducks. So I'd scrounge decoys and make them and get by that way. I used to use 30, 30 decoys all the time, and my father used 50. You see, when you hunt the way we did, you know what a duck looks like, every one of them, you know. You know what they look like, and you know because if they're turkeys, we called them turkeys, you didn't try to copy that one. You tried to make it look like the real duck. Like, like these, I think they look like the real duck. We lived on the island all winters, never in the summer, because the rich people come to the country club up at Dallas Bay, so we moved to the bay every summer, and my father bought a house right across the street from Chauncey Wheeler. So you can see why I was influenced by Chauncey Wheeler. He'd say, well, do this and do this. And for instance, he's the first one, and I'm one of the few that does it yet, is cut a groove for their eye. You know that groove? You see it there? See it? A duck has that, too. But it's that little things like that that he influenced me, you know. He, he was a rough old character. He, he, he did fool around. Most of those decoy makers were heavy drinkers and they were fishing guides and they were bums put in there. A lot of them were. I could name half a dozen that were like that. But they made decoys for an extra, you know, spend for their drinks. I've seen him, I'm Chauncey Wheeler now, I've seen him in his shop with 12 men sitting in there whittling, learning, you know, learning. So it was a spitting and whittling deal. They enjoyed that. They didn't have TV or anything, no radios. So they went down in the shop and, and chewed tobacco and whittled and spit and had a great time. There isn't too many good makers now. If they do, they make them to sell, you know. To... Well, the only power tool I use is a bandsaw. I draw the picture of the body out, the form, and saw it out of the block. Then I uh, tip it up and saw the corners off, where it starts its back. And from then on, I do it all with a rasp, a Stanley rasp and three different sized round files, about that long, around the head and under the chin and stuff. I use a small file and the big stuff, I use the big file. There's a limit to what you can do. You know, you try to make them look like the real duck and when you get it, you don't go any farther. You can't go any farther. What can you do? See, you don't look at something the same as I look at it. Do you think so? The way I picture a duck is the way I make it. Like that one. 
that's the way I picture a black duck. Now you might look at a black duck and see it different. You understand what I mean? So I think uh, everybody meets their tops. What I'm trying to say that you get so good and, and they satisfy you so you make the next one practically the same. I don't like to copy somebody else. I don't think my decoys are like anybody else's. You know, you can, if you know the darn things, you can tell pretty near who made them. Because you're in it. You're in a decoy. <laughs>